before we start the session, right, uh, I, I just want to make uh, uh, it very clear to all of you that this webinar is going to uh, throw some light on the career opportunities that you can have when you move to the cloud domain. And uh, what is cloud? Uh, how? Because cloud is a very big domain, right? And how to understand the various aspects of the cloud uh, and how cloud can fit in our role. That is also very important, right? Uh, because all of you are from different uh, job verticals. Few of you are developers, few of you are admin, few of you are network engineers, and few of you are architects. And a uh, few of you are uh, startup, uh, like just starting to, to explore. So uh, it's a great opportunity for me right now. Uh, yeah, well, uh, welcome, uh, Nitin. Um, Nitin is a manager, IT advisory. Um, so uh, before we start, uh, uh, let me tell you that uh, I, I, I will be covering here uh, most of the career opportunities that is available with respect to Amazon, but equal opportunity is available with other cloud vendors like Microsoft and Google, which are the alternate cloud vendors. And, are at a very competitive uh, stage with Amazon. So, um, and, and it, it, it will not only help you to uh, define your career path going forward, but will, it will also make you to identify and make a uh, correct career choice. At any point of time when you feel that, um, okay, my career is not going in the right direction, you can always uh, do a hard stop for yourself, rethink, uh, evaluate the technology and choose the right a right, a right path for you. Uh, for example, uh, if you take me, I have worked as a hardware engineer, I worked as a network admin, I worked as a system admin, I have also worked as a developer, I have also worked as an architect, and uh, I also uh, mentor people, I also help them in finding the correct career path so that they can grow into the career. Uh, the one thing which I would like to tell you before I go ahead and start the session that always evaluate yourself, right? Most of you uh, would have been uh, so. Most of you would have been seeing right now. The tech, uh, now the tech, there is a paradigm shift in, into the technology, and let us uh, forget about the technology. Let us uh, see the approach. For example, one one a um, so few of you would have gone through uh, various project uh, execution steps, right? Earlier, like 20, uh, 15, 10, 10, 15 years back, we were following the waterfall model of project execution, right? where two, three months we will do requirement gathering, two, three months we will do a, a system design and uh, we, we will see the architecture of the system, find the flaws, and then we will take two, three months to go ahead and develop the POC, and next two, three months we will go ahead and realize it into development or a QA or a test environment, right? So this was a waterfall mo model, right? They call it waterfall because we, uh, we take a long, long, uh, long process and we are just going one way. Right, water always flows into the one direction. It doesn't go in, in, in the opposite direction, or, or, or uh, it, it doesn't flow up, upside the inclination. It always flow downside the inclination. Correct. So then uh, you might have heard that recently agile has been recently introduced, right? And a few of you must have uh, exposure to the agile uh, 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 project management and and agile method of working, right? So agile means quick. Okay. So quick means you do something and you test it and then you uh, put checkpoints and then you go ahead, like you work for two weeks, you do a, a close sync up with the team, you check what, what are the things you have done, whether we can go ahead with this or not, if not then what can be done in order to uh, mitigate that issue, right? So here uh, you were doing a recheck for yourself at every uh, stage, right? So this is called Agile, it is very quick. You can execute the project in quick succession because you are identifying your problem at the right point of time, right? So similar way, a career choice should be agile in nature. It should be regularly evaluated, it should be regularly challenged, and you should regularly be learning in order to become a very good uh, professional in the domain that you are in or you want to be, right? Uh, so. Um, uh, uh, apart from those uh, kind of uh, things like here, we are just uh, discussing about the cloud computing as a domain and what are the career opportunities which is available into the cloud computing. We will be discussing more. You can go ahead and type your question uh, uh, on the question tab and I, would, I will try to uh, cover up all the questions which comes as and when uh, in, in, in the uh, precedence or, or in the sequence. Right? So first thing that 
the agenda of this webinar is what is cloud computing, what is AWS, what are the advantages of AWS, demand for cloud, types of certification in AWS, types of cloud professions, future trend in cloud computing, right? So uh, cloud computing as a concept is not a new concept, right? It has, it, uh, it, it is almost, uh, if I remember, it, uh, it was actually coined in 1960. Uh, in, in that decade, 1960s, it was coined for the first time by few of the professionals at IBM. So uh, the uh, introduction of the concept, the conceptual part of cloud comes from IBM. But later on, there was a, a, a silent period, like 70s, 80s, 90s, no, nothing has been done. However, parallel development has happened during that, that period in order to fuel the uh, uh, evolution of cloud computing, like cloud computing, um, as far as I am concerned, I, I, I am only hearing this term 2006, 2007 onwards. Before that, I have never listened about cloud computing, but and many people say that cloud computing is virtualization or it's the next generation of virtualization. No, cloud computing has one of the attributes as virtualization, like without virtualization, we cannot imagine cloud computing, but it is not that virtualization is the next, or the cloud computing is the next generation of the virtualization. There are a lot of things in cloud computing, and and, and cloud computing, you can say that uh, it doesn't encompass only virtualization, but it encompasses also your business. It, it is basically target towards the business needs, right? So business needs is basically scaling, right? For sometimes a few months back, a big person comes into the market, opens a shop, then he wants to go to the online, right? He wants to open an online shop, and then he wants to uh, open multiple retail uh, uh, shops in multiple cities, and then he wants to also do business across boundaries, right? So this mm -hmm. business is growing. And he also wants to fuel in a uh, uh, lot of online presence, because nowadays everyone, like so many millions of people are using internet, right? online purchase, buying, selling stuff, right? Using Amazon, Flipkart. So the, these are the result and result of cloud computing, right? We cannot manage such kind of infrastructure with the help of traditional uh, data centers, right? And and so uh, sometimes we think that, okay, it, it's about infrastructure virtualization. No, it's not only about infrastructure virtualization. It is also about your application virtualization. Your app. It, it is also about your network storage, desktop, virtualization is in cloud, everything is virtualized. There's nothing called static. Everything is volatile. Everything is virtualized. So we are going to um, talk a little about cloud computing. We'll also talk about the windows into the cloud computing domain. AWS is the leading window. And then we have Microsoft Azure, we have Backspace, we have Google Platform Cloud, right? So these are the multiple windows which are there in the cloud. AWS is leading. Why AWS is leading? Not only because it came into the market prior to other players, right? Uh, IBM was already there into the cloud domain, but IBM did not um, capitalize uh, the way Amazon did it. Why? Right? Because Amazon went ahead and it uh, solved the user stories, the business use cases. It has a better business justification than IBM, right? That was one of the primary reasons that why AWS picked up so fast. Then we will also talk about demand of cloud, types of certification in AWS, types of cloud professions which is needed in now and in the present in the present scenario, and what is the training of the cloud computing. So um, I'm sure you would have um, so uh, seen uh, or, or heard a multiple definition of the cloud from multiple uh, people, right? An architect defines the cloud in a different way. A developer defines the cloud in a different way. A project manager thinks that okay, cloud is completely a, a, a different story. He will write his own user story, he will give it to the Scrum Master, and he will create multiple tasks on top of that and assign it to the engineers who, are, who will start working, right? So the cloud, you can have definition as many as types of role that you, you are entertaining right now, or in the type of role that you are present. For example, a developer can think of a cloud as a platform where he can go and code, right? So he need not to install his machine, he need not to install the tools, development tools. He just has to log in, provision a development environment and start coding, right? It is so quick, 
correct? And and he doesn't have to bother about the infrastructure. So this is what developers think that anything I want to develop, I can develop it at any point of time, and I can sell it on online. I can sell it offline as well. I can move the data in and out wherever I want, and it is very secure. From an admin or admin perspective, or whether it's a server admin or a network admin, or an infrastructure architect. Uh, it's something like they can go ahead and create an infrastructure. They can go ahead and provision a data center. They can go ahead and provision uh, network e equipments, right? It can be, it, it is a virtual equipment, but it is available to them. It's just a drop and drag for them, and uh, and 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 they don't have to bother about what is in the background, right? What, what are the hardware? What are the types of hardware? I just want a Linux x86. Uh, Real machine, right? I don't have to bother about the real license. I don't have to bother about the hardware. I don't have to, I have to bother about the admin who will come and install this real on a system, right? So it is readily available to me, right? So similarly, if I want to create a virtual private cloud, I can go ahead and spend it in a few minutes. I want to have an auto scaling environment. I can do it with a few clicks of mouse, right? So these these are the things which actually defines. Um, uh, cloud computing. Cloud computing you can uh, define as a technology which encompasses business needs, right? And and it is fueled up by virtualization. This virtualization is again composed of several layers of virtualization, like application, storage, network, server, desktop. Everything is virtualized. It is also attributed with something called P model. So P model is something like you. We'll have to pay for the time you are using. When you are not using it, you will not have to pay. For example, if I am using a VM, right, and I am running a VM, I am hosting a website, I am hosting it for only daytime or not, and I am setting it down during the night time, right. So I have to pay for the daytime for the for, so and the minimum denomination of using a VM in AWS is one hour, right. So per hour I will be charged few cents for the. Uh, VM which I am using. So the payment, uh, or, or you can say the pay model is is uh, very attractive for a small and medium businesses, right? They don't want to set up their data center. They just want to get the uh, stuff rented or get a subscription available to them. Let them pay for the time they are using it, right? So we have virtualization and then we have pay per use model. And the third model is. They don't have to bother about what is happening in the background. No headaches, no um, 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 unnecessary uh, 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 botheration about the hardware that is needed. I need to go ahead and talk to the vendor. Um, I, I want this much of hardware. Uh, uh, I need this much of the network equipment to be set to my place. Because if you start interacting with a data center person, right, you will get to know all these pains. Like they have to go ahead and order few few of the servers and uh, equipments much in advance. In few cases, they order it in uh, like advance. Uh, 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 they they put order for six months advance or uh, uh, one year advance. The order is placed with the hardware vendor and then. The manufacturer it pack it ship it and then it gets loosened up and then uh, it, it is fitted into the rack and then attached to the network and then stored it and then it is powered on installation of the operating system. So and install the uh, application and then make sure that the power and the cooling is available round the clock. So there are lot 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 of things which you don't have to bother about. So these three things actually defines a cloud. The virtualization technology that it uses. Second one is the pay model that cloud is having, and third one uh, is uh, you don't have to manage um, the hardware or the software. In this case, it is completely managed, right? So that this these three terms actually defines the cloud computing, especially public CNAP, a public cloud computing platform. Uh, not on the private side because private side you would like to create the same kind of infrastructure in your private data center. But again, for that you need to hire the uh, system admin, network admin, uh, go and raise uh, uh, proposals for hardware vendors to ship the hardware and all that. So we are just concentrating on public uh, cloud, a public offering from the cloud computer, right? So it says that. Um, Okay, uh, so uh, what are the ways to access cloud? Right, so cloud you can access, of course, 
if you're connected to internet. If you're not connected to internet, you will not be able to access the cloud. That is one of the primary connection from your laptop to the cloud. And, and, and you can feel the power. For example, a power of managing a whole infrastructure using a single laptop. You're not even entering the data center. You don't have to hear those uh, noises of the fan, which is just blowing up uh, the hot air out of the uh, data center, or making a lot of noise into the data center, right? You just have to plug in your machine or your laptop with the internet and get hooked with the internet and the cloud, public cloud um, subscription that you're having, correct? Right? And uh, so that uh, actually a gateway to the cloud. Now, cloud. What are the different kinds of cloud which is available in the market, right? So cloud basically uh, people define into different ways. As I said that a Java developer wants to have a platform where he can do the development, right? So that will become a platform as a service. And you just have to rent that platform for the period he is uh, doing the development and then he can scrap it, he can destroy it, he can put it to fire, right? So he can do anything with his in a platform. Uh, Infrastructure as service, for example, I am a system admin. I want to put a, a firewall, right? Or I want to have multiple operating systems running, and then I want to create a, a e-commerce portal into the cloud. I can go ahead and rent a infrastructure for myself, right? Infrastructure can be in two forms. Either you rent the uh, hardware infrastructure, or you rent the templates. So when you say hardware infrastructure, you have the flexibility of choosing what hardware you want. You want HP hardware, IBM hardware, or you want Lenovo hardware, or Dell hardware. Right? Uh, similarly, uh, on, on, on the other side, when you go ahead and rent a template, you are not, like you just get x86 or 64-bit or 32-bit uh, platform operating system. You need not to worry about on which platform it is running. It will be running as long as you need it. And it will have associated CPU, memory, and disk space, whatever you want. But it will mask you the underlying hardware. So this kind of offering, where the underlying hardware is masked, right? This kind of offering is provided by Amazon. But we are un you can go ahead and uh, order for your own choice of hardware, right? That is also available into public cloud premises, and it is offered with soft layer, right? So there are different kinds of cloud which is available to you. There's no your needs. There is third, so this is called IS. So we have discussed IS, we have discussed SAS. Now third one is SAS. So SAS stands for software as a service. For example, I, I have some 10,000 machines, or maybe um, I, I have 10,000 machines, uh, laptops, desktops in my network. I want to patch them on, right? It's all Windows machine, and whenever someone wants to plug in, it will get passed, and all of my machines are connected to internet, right? In that case, what are the various uh, uh, um, ways I can do it? Either I can go ahead, buy some software, right? buy some hardware, install it, and then create an infrastructure for that. I don't want it. I just want to rent the software which is available, right? So I will just, whenever my machine is getting connected, I will go ahead. And um, uh, the, the patches which is listed on, 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 on the cloud or on the internet will get pushed to my machine, right? And, and it will identify my machine and it will push the patches, correct? So, so here what is happening that you are not going and setting an infrastructure, you are not going and setting a platform. You are consuming a software which is there in the sky uh, or, or which is there in the cloud, right? That is how Salesforce works, right? You want a database? You need not to worry about the database. You just go ahead and create an instance of it into, into the cloud. Feed that details into your Oracle client or uh, uh, Toad or MySQL client and you will be able to access it. You want to monitor your uh, thousands of servers that is there in your data center. You don't have a monitoring solution. You don't want to set up the monitoring solution, hire a monitoring uh, a professional and push the agents, maintain the upgrades, maintain the patches. You go ahead and subscribe the monitoring um, uh, um, a software from the cloud and configure so that your, uh, it can identify your machine in your uh, uh, physical network. All your machine can go ahead and uh, identify the server and pull or push um, um, the uh, binaries and start monitoring itself, right? So these are the various types of cloud which is available based on your consumption need.
and this has been modeled mostly uh, by keeping uh, the end user, the consumer, in in mind. Like, who is the consumer? What kind of need? What kind of requirement they are having? What kind of business they are running? Right. So the, the and there are certain cost advantages to it, right? So this is how it is working. So here you can say clear segregation. What is there in IS? What is there in PAS? And what is there in SAS? IS, IS as I discussed, it's an infrastructure as service. We have major vendors like Rackspace, Joint, VMware, and Amazon Web Services. Amazon Web Services is leading right now, and it is not only. It is not only uh, in this tier; it is also available in other tiers. Like it, it, it is also available available in uh, PaaS model. It is also available in SaaS model, right? So uh, Amazon is a major provider here. Uh, in PaaS, you can see Google App, Salesforce, Amazon are again the leaders. Uh, in SaaS model, uh, Google. Uh, for uh, Salesforce, Salesforce.com, and Amazon are the leaders. So any any question till now that you are having? And any question from the audience? Are you able to uh, like? Um, am, am I able to uh, explain everything that that you are looking for, or is there an, anything specific that you want me to uh, go ahead and discuss? Ganesh, Jinsi, Sai Teja, Manoj, okay. so uh, yeah. So uh, AWS, right? So AWS, uh, so Amazon was was actually into the uh, e-commerce business, right? And Jeff Bezos is uh, the CEO, or you can say the CTO, or the overall head for. Jeff Bezos and Jeff was already a CTO in some other company and he left that company and he wanted to open a world biggest uh, bookshop, right? A, a place where people can come and buy the books. That that was his passion. We all we all, we all have gone reading books, right? And many of us have gone to the streets, bought the book. We all of uh, we all of us had a small repository of our books, right? And we love to read through uh, either it's a comic or it can be a science book or it can be a mathematics book and we use to share right so this concept of Amazon view as a business in, in the mind of Jeff Bezos he always wanted to have the world biggest library from where people can come rent the book and and go ahead read it and then return it or, or maybe buy it right so this was the initial business plan for Amazon and Amazon is started in 1994 it is still one of the youngest companies into the market, and it, it it has capitalized to an extent that it has become even group, uh, bigger. It, it it has grown like uh, like a giant. It is one of the biggest retail uh, e-commerce company in in the world, and it is challenging Walmart or it is challenging some other like uh, uh, online uh, um, e-commerce companies like eBay, right? It it has already surpassed uh, eBay. A long back, so that that was the original concept from where it came. Uh, this they were doing business, and the business was growing. Uh, they had big uh, warehouses uh, 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 into the market uh, 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 where they used to keep all these stuffs, and uh, uh, they used to sell it online. But in you, and it was primarily for U.S. and Europe region. In India, it has not yet reached in 2000, about uh, early 2000, right? It was started in 1994-96, and then till 2018 they will come to India. So they started uh, uh, finding a pattern like people used to do the buying, right? Only during the festive seasons, like the Thanksgiving seasons or Christmas season, and 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 they used to have a very huge infrastructure to support that, right? Because uh, first of all, they have to host uh, a website. Second thing, they have to take care of the security where the pay. People can go ahead, swipe their credit cards, enter their credit cards, and CVV number, and it should be linked to a payment gateway, which should be secure. And third thing, uh, because of the uncertain nature, right? For the summer, it will be very the business will be like going very slow, not much traffic. And during Thanksgiving and Christmas, the traffic will be huge. You like no, nobody can actually expect what 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 is the surge in the traffic? Is is it a burst? 
And if it is the worst, when 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 is the worst, right? So like that, uh, it 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 actually uh, they started realizing that okay, during certain uh, reasons, uh, like certain uh, time frame, we have this kind of traffic. Okay, we have the infrastructure. Let us rent it out for the remaining of the year, right? So they started the concept of uh, this renting out, and it came from a discussion of Jeff with his directors, right? So they started they started thinking of again. And again, they hired some software engineers, data scientists, and they started working on it. They created virtualization tools. They reused open source components. Okay, and uh, they used open source components. And uh, after using the open source components, uh, they actually went ahead and um, created a portal, created a business model called Amazon Web Services. It's Amazon infrastructure at your doorstep using internet through a web browser. Right? That was the whole concept. So that is how AWS came into picture. Uh, AWS products are like compute, storage, databases, app services, deploy, deployments, right? It also provides one year of uh, free tier. So you can log in, you can create your account. If you are in India, you will be charged rupees two. If you are in US, you will be charged rupees uh, uh, 60 or 62 or, or one dollar, right? So based based on your location, they will charge you a minimal fee to check that, validate that your account is valid or not, your credit credit card is valid or not, and then you can lo log in and you can start playing with the services that they are providing, right? Uh, you can also hear a lot of uh, keywords like AMI instance, volume, snaps, so do not worry. Uh, these are just uh, 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 names which is very or keywords which is specific to uh, AWS. AMI means Amazon Machine Images, which is just like a VM template. Instance means a running machine. Volume means a hard disk, right? And a snapshot means a snapshot or, 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 or a backup copy, right? Why organization choose AWS? So uh, there are many reasons for choosing the AWS. First thing, Amazon for a long period of time, like from 2005 to 2010, Amazon was the only public cloud provider. And they have utilized this time in, in a much better way. How they have utilized, they have understood the business of the end user, whether it's a retail customer, a small shop, or whether it's a small and medium business, or they want they are a gaming company, they want to go online and they have users spread across all over the world. Or 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 maybe it, it's a healthcare company where the data security is very important. The patient data should not be compromised, should not leave the country boundaries, right? So they understood the business of, of the end user. They came up with different services, right? They came up with private data center, they came up with the concept of creating a physical data center into the country, getting into a legal agreement with, the, uh, with that country for putting your uh, confidential data into their Amazon data center, getting the uh, services certified with third party auditing agencies. And that's how they have uh, grown, right? So now when, uh, as a company, like as a startup company or a small and medium company, whenever we think like which cloud to choose, whether to choose Google, whether to choose Azure, Rackspace, or AWS, our first choice is AWS because it has been into the business for a long time, understands the business well, and they have a very good record of uh, launching successful business. And, 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 and the last and the most important point is it is infinitely scalable. When I say infinitely scalable, it means that suppose today you want to launch a business that is worth, uh, and, and you want to spend uh, uh, a sum of seven billion US dollars, right? You will need need a very huge infrastructure, right? If you want to launch in a day, you have a budget of seven billion US dollar. You have a business plan. You want to spend this money all in a day. You are going to need a very huge infrastructure, and there is no other company other than Amazon which can provide you such a big infrastructure to fuel your seven billion dollar enterprise in today's world. Right? You, even if you combine Google, if you combine Microsoft, Azure, Rackspace, put together, they will not be able to fuel up the need for an infrastructure 
which is generated by a seven billion dollar enterprise in a single day, and Amazon can do it for almost any year, right? Means three sixty five seven billion enterprises, it can like uh, uh, can be can stand still with the help of uh, Amazon uh, data centers, Amazon infrastructure, Amazon uh, cloud services. Uh, this talks about, uh, so I have already spoken about the paper uses, resource pooling, scalable, opportunity cost, uh, large capital expenditure. So th this is just a cost comparison, right? This is just a cost comparison and, and which, uh, which tells you that there is a lot of co opportunity cost that you can save, right? And you can also see that the, the blue line represents the traditional hardware, right? And the dotted line represents the predict predictable demand. So, if you are using a pred uh, uh, this traditional hardware, you always have to predict your demand, and then you have to scale your hardware. Right? At certain point of time, your demand will be more than your hardware. In that case, you will have to go through a business loss. Amazon AWS identifies this as an opportunity cost, and it goes in sync with your demand. You go grow when your business grows. If your business is going through a bad freeze, or if, you, if the business is not making money, you shrink down. Right? Release the resources to the uh, Amazon. Some uh, Amazon because you don't need it. And when again your business grows, you uh, go ahead and uh, kick off multiple instances, multiple platforms, multiple softwares as as much as you want. Right. So it, this actually uh, shows a tough fight, Windows as well in uh, uh, AWS, but there is not much tough fight. That one basic difference is as uh, Azure came late, Azure is focused towards Windows, and Azure is a platform as a service. It provides you the platform to develop your application, right? It does not meet up the requirement generated by most of the startups or the uh, small and medium businesses, which is basically for platform application development, uh, infrastructure platform application deployments, right? So, and, 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 and it also generates a need for, um, uh, you can say software as a service, which is not all available in Azure. Azure is also growing. It is growing because Microsoft has got a lot of uh, enterprise customers. It is very niche in the enterprise customers, right? Because they have that reach, they already have signed up a lot of um, uh, deals with enterprise customers. They used to push uh, Windows as well. But when it comes to a small startup and small and medium businesses, Amazon is the leader, and they are also encroaching into the enterprise section with the services that they offer. Right? This is the demand of the cloud from 2000. Five, six to 2015, the demand was exponential. Till 2020, 20, 2025, right? The demand is going to grow. Later on, like even Gartner, Forrester has not been able to predict because there is always a paradigm shift into the technology within a period of five to ten years. So, what will be the next generation of the cloud? Nobody knows right now. What will be the shift into the cloud? Nobody knows in uh, or no, nobody knows or no, nobody can predict that. Uh, I, I'm just giving an example. When I entered my college, right, uh, we used to have like we do not used to have um, um, any concept of email addresses here in India. So we used to write on postcards or letter heads, right, and we used to drop it. And the parent and they used to receive it, they, they read it, and they just then reply to it, right. Uh, from there, uh, we moved to phones. We used to call once in a week to our parents or to our, our friends once in a week or twice in a week whenever we get time and whenever our parents allow or even if we have enough money, we will go ahead and make a call to them, talk to them, right? From that, it has come to a, 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 a place we are, we are living in a world. If you want to call people per person and living anywhere in the world, you just have to dial his number, right? And if he's, he's having a mobile or, or an internet connection, he will be able to talk to you instantly, right? So the world has shrinked, correct? And this has happened only in 15 to 20 years, right? And, and there is a lot of technology which has enabled it. So 
that is the reason that uh, till now, like every five years, we get the uh, uh, growth report, market forecasting, five to ten years. But after that, even Forrester and um, Gartner are not able to predict what will happen, what is going to happen next, right? So till 2025, there's a very good uh, career opportunity into the cloud. You can grow as a cloud. There are not many professionals into the cloud. Uh, when I say cloud, it's not only just going and using few services. It is about automation. It, it is about developing app on the cloud. It is about minimizing the time of uh, 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 development, right? Um, it, 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 it is about uh, generating lost of a lot of opportunity cost, right? Saving a lot of money from um, a company perspective. So that is how it is growing. So uh, here are a few, uh, you can say, uh, Uh, service market highlights. It says that what is the global um, cloud computing revenue? It is growing very fast. I would not like to um, like uh, bind it with the uh, the monetary because I can see the opportunity goes much beyond it. Uh, opportunity in the sense that like that, for example. Uh, Few years back, I was working in C, right? Now, when I meet the guys, and and, and few years back, when I was a fresher, I was working on C. I was working on Rex programming language. I was working on some uh, Visual, uh, Visual Studio and .NET framework as well. So at that time, those were pretty new technology, right? And people used to have um, a, a very good hands on 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 one of the programming language at that point of time. I was a fresher and I was very intrigued that okay I know at least two or three programming languages, two or three framework and I'm and, and, and the king, right? So but now when I go and meet people, right? I, I meet people who are into the colleges and 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 uh, and, and I, I get surprised. Like college students uh, who are so passionate about technology they will start building on top of C and C right? They will start learning on top of it. And, and what I achieved when I was fresher is now the platform for for new uh, generation which is coming up. People are learning Python, people are learning Ruby, people are doing analytics, people are doing all sorts of uh, development work, right? And and their their skills um, um, are unmatchable. They, they they are just growing, growing, and growing. And these are the people who are going to contribute a lot into the development of cloud computing in, in, into the development of other leading uh, technology driven companies right or they may open their own company as well so this is how they have grown accordingly there has been a very uh, a competitive uh, financial backfill for example uh, when i passed out from my college or when, when in in 2005 and 2004 People used to give a, get a standard salary. They used to work on Java and C, C++, and they used to feel that okay, this is the end, right? Uh, now, if you are Java expert, you don't need to. You need not to only know the Java. You need. You, you also need to know the application. You need to know your uh, business, uh, your your company's business need. How critical is your work? How you can minimize uh, the time for de developing a Java project? How you can uh, do is a continuous integration and continuous de deployment of your Java project. How you can fasten the process of de de development, and how you can make it uh, cloudify it. How you can sell it, right? So everything, not only the uh, technical stuff, but also on the business needs, right? And also on the cost model, right? Companies do not have billions of money to uh, keep it in reserve and keep investing. They invest something and they wait that some some return will come. So the business business is also shifted, and accordingly, um, uh, the industry and technology has also shifted to, to to match that business need. So that is how it is growing. Of course, when it comes to pay package, cloud engineers are one of the best pay paid uh, people in, uh, in the world right now. Like if, even if you are working in the US and you are a cloud professional with uh, three to four years of experience. Good knowledge on to AWS, you can easily fetch 140k to 160k uh, per annum easily. Even in India, it's a very handsome salary that the people 
and and it's not that only the enterprises are paying even the startup companies are paying that much money so career wise it's very good uh, the thing is it is very challenging you have to keep learning and it is not only about knowing virtualization or or uh, in uh, knowing certain programming language it is having a holistic view holistic and you have to master that uh, master at least three four domains which will keeps you uh, which which will keep you updated with, with the changes that is going to happen into the cloud domain over the next four five years right so uh, this is what uh, as i discussed what is the median salary they have calculated um, i won't like to bind it with the salary because i always find that for a technologist technology is more important and technologists are always in thread uh, with with uh, the course they write with the technology they are working on with the and and uh, uh, result the business needs that they are fulfilling with their uh, technology rather than binding it with the salary salary grows and and it will keep growing in, in as long as we are sticking to uh, the latest technology so uh, this is a uh, uh, fair view about the job opportunities that we are having in the world most of the job opportunities are there in the us uh, relatively less job opportunities in uh, europe than in us uh, pay wise also europe can match us but not that 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 will uh, you can find few other uh, um, um, this is where uh, the job uh, is available at uh, quite competitive rate it's in australia brazil so these, these are the countries that, which actually says that okay we have the job and we don't have resources and when you especially go to the specialized domain like how and in that if you go for a platform as service and in platform as service you go as a, a app developer or you go as a a uh, 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 game developer right uh, there are hardly few people so you can count on fingers that there are people to back fill this place the demand is huge but there is no one to go ahead and back fill not no one but relatively smaller number of people who are there can back fill it right so th these are the various things which is uh, available we have our new nomenclature coming up like cloud developer cloud admin this ops product ops aws where to go we are always confused right so when when we talk about cloud aws is the first choice go ahead and, and uh, develop your career parallel to aws because it is going to stay into the come uh, into the market for at least next 10 years there is no doubt about it second thing in that you get the specialization whether you want to be an admin whether you want to be a devops engineer for automation you want to be a cloud developer for developing um Uh, app for gaming companies or e-commerce um, e-com e e companies is your choice or your own main expertise that you would like to pursue but all of them are very competitive very good and and it's good from a career perspective to stick to the cloud right certification so there are three types of certifications available in the cloud um the first one is called cloud administrator certifications which is nothing but uh, it is more of a cloud infrastructure architect certification people get to know about the various cloud services provided by uh, amazon uh, like how to create a vm how to create a, a storage and how to create a website how to create an infrastructure how to create an auto scaling environment um, how to deploy automatically like that and and so this is about cloud administrator is ops or product ops kind of certification that is available uh we have another set of uh, uh certification which is available we call it as a uh, cloud developer certification that is specifically for development guys so they need to know the programming languages they need to know the programming framework with the ror or they want to django python or they want to use some other programming framework and and how in depth they they know how good they are into java and what the very the very flavors of java so that is all about the development certification the third and the most important domain which has came right now is about devops like you must have all about devops 
even in US, there is a lot of craze about DevOps. We are not able to find a, a, a correct fit for the de DevOps. So DevOps is actually a rule which lies somewhere into development and operations, right? Uh, a developer knows an app very well, and operations guys knows the functional aspect of the app very well. For example, uh, uh, for example, a logging software, right? Uh, 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 but the developer knows that what are the changes he can do in order to generate more what goes long or more uh, more um, you can say informative logs, right? Uh, he can tweak the change. He can create own logger. He can tweak the change. So he knows the app very well, the application very well. Uh, developer knows what to find into the log, right? So. If, if uh, my log is generating a lot of logs and I'm not getting any valuable information into the logs, it is useless from functional perspective, right? So uh, DevOps are the guys who sits in between, right? And, and these are the people who actually knows development, and they also know operations, right? So then they know the technical aspect in that, they know the functional aspect in that. So, and, and, and when they know both, they can do an automation, right? Based on the functional requirement of the client, they can go ahead and tweak the uh, logger, right? Or they can write their own logger. Similarly, if they want to automate something, they can go ahead and very easily automate certain things because they know the system, the app returns, and, and the functionality and the requirement, right? So the, this role is very important and, and, and it is growing. We have huge demand for DevOps into the market, but we are not able to find suitable tips. And, and this is what Gartner's and Forrester says. Like going forward, there will be a huge gap, huge gap between the demand and supply for automation engineers. So uh, this is about the sysops. Um, it talks about uh, you should have one minimum one year of system administration experience. You should be well versed with Linux and Windows administration. You can go ahead with AWS certified SysOps administrator associate level. Right? Yeah, uh, this is for developers. These are the basic certifications that you can go ahead and uh, have it. So you, you should have a very good experience into uh, the, you can say the development, the development side. Uh, it's not 10 to 15, it, it is actually one to five years of experience in, in development. You can go ahead with AWS certified uh, developer associate and, and apologies for this typo here. We have cloud architects. We have another separate um, certification. So as I said that there are multiple types of certifications basically categorized into development. Um, automations and, and um, uh, you can say administration. For development, we have uh, the de cloud developer certifications for administrations. We have sysops. So, uh, automation, uh, for automation, we have sysops. And then we have uh, for administration, and uh, we have the cloud architect, uh, uh, associate architect, associate and professional both certifications are available. Now, uh, I just want to give you uh, uh, my perspective, like, None of these are, are uh, something like you can rank one, one um, behind the other, right? All of them are equal. A system admin for a company is equally important as a developer, which is equally important as an uh, automation engineer, right? So everyone has to respect the job which uh, other people are doing. And then only we can learn from their experiences and we can grow, right? So that, that, that's how it, it goes hand, hand in hand. So future trading technologies, as I said, that uh, right now we are not able to, uh, 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 like not we, uh, Gartner and Forrester is not able to predict the technology evolution after 2025, right? They have only uh, said, uh, they, they have forecasted the technology evolution over the next five to 10 years, which says that it is exponential. There is going to be a, a huge demand and the industry is going to be more consumer centric. Consumer centric in the sense that uh, you can see, right? Uh, people nowadays are not going and shopping in retail shops on, on, or, or in uh, big markets, right? They are shopping online, and this trend is increasing. And that's how the company like Amazon and Flipkart, and eBay, 
are, are making a lot of money, right? They are grow, they're, they're growing like that. So the market is becoming more consumer centric, right? And and the technology which is support uh, which supports that is obviously needs to be very volatile in nature, like cloud. So yeah, so it has to grow, it has to shrink based on the demand nature of the demand. It also has to change, right? For example, if today Amazon thinks that okay. From uh, e-commerce market, I want to switch to some other business things. They need not to think twice. They have enough money. They have enough infrastructure. They can go ahead and spend few months of development, and they can switch up their business, uh, 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 switch their business to some other uh, uh, to meet some other user uh, story, right? So that is how it is changing. This is very important. Hybrid cloud. Um, hybrid cloud is something like where you have private cloud and public cloud. So let me tell you something about the private cloud. Till now, what we have discussed is the public cloud. AWS is a market leader for public cloud. The same kind, of, but that that is for generic business user stories like e-commerce or you can say to a certain extent uh, retail uh, or retail industries or real estate industries or maybe garment industries. It is it is it, it, it is one stop shop the public cloud. But where data security comes into the picture, right? Data is very, very important. They do not want the uh, data to leave the country or even in certain cases the state. In US, the uh, laws in one state is different from, sometimes it is different from the laws in other states, right? So they want to bind their data to the particular state and go on by the rules and the regulations, right? Like banks, healthcare industries. In that case, uh, a few of the companies, right, healthcare industries or bank, you know, like Citibank and, and uh, maybe uh, even State Bank of India, they create their own private cloud, right? And this private cloud is actually, uh, you can see, it's a prototype of the public cloud. It has, it, it, it has, it tried to uh, imitate all the features of the public cloud, but they want to secure it into the own data center because of security concerns. Okay. So uh, yeah, so I'm I'm getting few questions. I will start taking the question. Let me go ahead and start taking the place it's coming. Okay, so Ganesh is saying that uh, if you talk about the security concerns on public cloud and then uh, what excellent private cloud addresses, etc. So uh, Ganesh, yes. Uh, so uh, to, uh, to uh, answer your question. Uh, Public cloud data is as secure as your uh, private cloud data, but there is a catch here. For example, AWS doesn't have any data center here in India, right? And government of India has a regulation that the details of the patients or, or healthcare industry, for example, or the details of the banking and financial domain company should not leave the country. Right, it should be well within the boundaries of the country. Now, these are the uh, 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 businesses like the banks, the healthcare. They cannot go and opt for cloud services, right? Because, firstly, AWS doesn't have a data center in India, and secondly, they are bounded by the government regulations, right? And, and so, this, this this is on the government regulations, right? And and the data center availability. What about the security? You can always challenge that a public cloud data is not secure, as secure as a private cloud data, but I will disagree with that. Why? Because uh, the same technology of, for encryption, the same technology for uh, auditing, uh, the same agencies which are audits a private data center is auditing a public data center, right? But it's just that your private data center is a single team, there is only one customer, right? And you you believe uh, like or, or, or the, uh, or the uh, enterprise owner, like who is owning that company believes that my data is secure because it's a single tenant and there is no access from outside, right? But I believe that cloud data is more secure in the sense that AWS knows that then it's a multi-tenant environment. There are multiple clients on the cloud, right? And that is still able to protect your data. It means that they are keep on enhancing their security technology. There has not been a single breach, uh, data breach or data theft issue into the AWS in, in the whole history. Uh, of AWS since its existence, right? So this shows that public cloud is relatively more secure 
because of the technology that it uses for encryption, decryption, tunneling, uh, which which is the best in the industry, right? And second thing, it gets regularly audited by third party, right? Which audits it, and and there are a lot of brute force or a lot, lot of uh, scans on on your uh, data and data centers and try to find out if there is any bleak chance of data uh, theft or not. That's how they uh, certify the uh, AWS data centers. Okay, I'm getting a few other questions. Okay, there is one question from uh, Ginny, Jinsi. Jinsi says that what is the role of a cloud engineer in an enterprise? So, uh, Jinsi, if you're going, uh, so the, the, the role of a cloud engineer uh, differs from the type of organization that he is joining, for example. Uh, if you are a dev cloud developer, so uh, it primarily depends upon the role that, that, that you are in. Whether you are a developer, you are an automation or you are a system admin. If you are a developer, right, you will uh, get an opportunity to work onto the platform which is provided by the, which is hosted on the, onto the cloud. So for example, as a developer, I want to have Git Jenkins installed, right? And I also want to develop, uh, work, work on uh, Java projects. And there are many people who are working on that, and then we can go ahead and watch the code. We can check out the code. We can compile the code, do online testing. We can do simulation, right? Within quick span of time, we need not to wait for something to for someone to set up my infrastructure. I can do it myself, right? And, and get my app ready. So this is the typical role of a cloud developer, right? Uh, cloud automation engineer. What it does that? Uh, okay. Uh, so during uh, evening hours or in the morning hours, people do online purchases, right, on Amazon or Flipkart, right. So the traffic grows. So they have to create an automation that during morning and during evening, as and when the traffic grows, there will be surging in the traffic, and uh, the backend infrastructure should be warmed up in order to capture that request. And when the request slows down and uh, goes below a threshold, uh, uh, um, the infrastructure should be removed because they don't want to pay unnecessary cost uh, for very bleak uh, or very limited uh, traffic, right? This is the work of, typical work of uh, uh, automation engineer. They do a lot of things other than this. Like they analyze the logs, they also analyze the cookies, they also analyze uh, from where the traffic is coming in, the traffic is okay or not. Uh, is that someone is trying to um, uh, do a DOS attack that is denial of service attack on your website. Is there any website which is crawling your uh, uh, crawling flip card in AWS website for repetitive or for knowing what is the price of each items, right? So that is how they uh, uh, take care of everything. So cloud automation engineer does the automation, takes care of the security part, also takes care a little bit about the development, also takes a uh, few chunk of the system admin work, right? So this, these are the different roles that you will play. Uh, Jinsi is saying that how is the job market for a newly AWS certified fresher with one two years of experience? You have immense opportunity, Jinsi. Opportunity in the sense of learning, opportunity in the sense of getting a good pay package outside. If you are AWS certified, there is no other certification which can match AWS certification as of now in terms of cloud, whether development or sysops or maybe a system admin or architect. So Jinsi is saying that is there any sequencing with the certification to be done first. So Jinsi, there is no uh, um, sequence. These are three different roles. So it depends whether you want to play all the roles in your company. Um, do you want to learn everything and get yourself certified? Or do you want to pursue your career in one of these uh, uh, domain? It practically depends upon you. You can do all the certification. There is no order to it. You can do one certification, uh, re get it renewed over a period of time. And, and stick to the domain if you would like to. So Rakesh has one question. Rakesh's question is, I'm working as a patent engineer. I have much experience in this domain, but I want to learn Amazon technology and want to deep dive in this domain for infringement analysis. How your course would help me for that? So uh, Rakesh, um, your question is quite interesting, quite valid. Uh, 
first of all, for doing any kind of, so if, if you are a patent engineer and you are dealing a lot of stuff on the development side or automation side or even on, on, on the infrastructure side, you, uh, uh, you are handling a lot of data or you want to uh, pursue a career where you, you, you want to create your own patent infrastructure or you want to suggest uh, um, the company to create, to, to, uh, to uh, actually virtualize the patent uh, infrastructure. If I correctly understand, you can go ahead and explore it first. First, go ahead and explore it. Uh, if you feel that it is something which which fits in, uh, and, and if you feel that uh, you have an opportunity here to learn something new, and then make use of it in your own domain, you are more than welcome. Do ha do go ahead, spend some time, learn uh, a little, uh, uh, bits and pieces of AWS, and and that will give you a glimpse of about whether it fits in your requirement or if it, uh, it doesn't fit, right? So that, 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 that uh, like self-evaluation will be able to tell you clearly. Okay, so Manoj is having a question. Um, I am, uh, okay, Raju, as I am in ITSM field and don't have any technical profile, so my question is, will it be a good idea to start a career in cloud computing? And if yes, then what should be the path to start with? Uh, second question, is, uh, should I go for AWS or Azure from job perspective? So Manoj, again, uh, like, so uh, you're into ITS and field, right? And ITS and itself is a very vast domain, right? Uh, it is more uh, related to the services and the security part, correct, if I'm not wrong. Uh, if you know cloud, right, so uh, 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 imagine a situation where your company team is working on cloud, right, there, there can be a lot of concerns, right, you may, you may uh, uh, want to, for example, uh, you may want to subscribe a, a ITS and a SaaS software to use it, I'm not going to the business with it, I'm just telling you uh, as an example, you want to um, subscribe for an ITS and tool and want to use it you are well aware about the physical implementation of the tool, but you need to learn them, that what is the, what is the best ideas and tool, what are the best practices for that into the cloud, right? So it, it, it may not help you uh, uh, directly, but it can help you in pointing to the right direction in which you can proceed, you can pursue a career, right? IDSM as a SaaS platform, okay? How secure it is, okay? What are the various uh, uh, companies which are offering Right, it, it will be basically a SaaS model. Uh, what are the enhancement on top of it can be made? Right? How it fit, how it fits into my career. So my recommendation for you is to go ahead and evaluate more on ITSM as a cloud service, right, provided to you, because um, um, you you must be working on 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 problem management, change management, right, knowledge management, documentation, right. There are a lot of things you will be working on if if uh, um, not, not, not even the technical. If you go uh, go to the functional aspect of it, cloud has a lot of capability in build to provide you uh, a good in that into ITS and domain. So I think from that perspective, I would also recommend you to go ahead and um, read more on 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 on, on like ITSM as a, as a cloud service, right? and then only you will uh, start realizing that okay, I, whether I have to go for technical or shall I go for a functional. Uh, IDSM role, right? So, Purnendu uh, Misra um, is having a question. What is what what is the course syllabus for AWS certifications? So, uh, the course syllabus it depends upon the certification that you are choosing. It is different for different uh, uh, courses. For cloud architects, you have to know all, most of the services which is provided by AWS, including EC2, VPC, um, Redshift, Stop, um, Lean Stop. So you need to know uh, all the services. Then you need to know what is the collaborative uh, stuff needed to integrate all these uh, different services and how we can go ahead and create a business story. So you have individual uh, uh, services. Uh, um, you, that you have to study, then you have a quiz, and then you have projects. So it goes like that. So, 
So uh, there is a question from Jensi. Can you please connect the dots between the big data technology and the cloud computing? If yes, which the certification should be preferred? So Jensi, uh, big data uh, is again it's not a new concept, right? If if and any one of you or even you has been into the big data domain, right? Big data is a uh, is one of the oldest is not one of the oldest but among the oldest I can say uh, domain. Uh, earlier, we used to have MPA cluster, right? You go ahead, submit the job to the MPA node, and then it is, uh, segregate the job into small, small chunks and distributes it to the cluster node, right? And then, in that case, we used to have uh, uh, distributed file systems, and each node talks to each other, process the node. One node identifies that okay, the node is unhealthy, then uh, the, it reports to the master node, or even master node goes ahead and posts uh, uh, um, the worker nodes. So that is how it was working earlier. The same thing has gone ahead a step a little far. We have laid up a, a set of services. It, we have one service, I, we have one service. Uh, we have a few other services like SDFS, right? We have also other services encapsulated in that, and uh, that pretty much works in the same way, right? One of the challenges with big data is the scale. For example, if I want to submit one TB of data for processing today, tomorrow, uh, 1.5 TB of data comes, right? Then I have to add a few more machines, right? And day after, again, the one TB of data drops to 500 GB of data for processing. Then I have to reduce the infrastructure, right? So that auto scaling, it, uh, that elasticity is not inbuilt into the big data infrastructure, right? When you start using AWS, you will see that AWS is having one service called Elastic MapReduce. Go ahead, create your big data infrastructure, fuel in the data, right, for processing to the head node, or, or upload it from some FTP server. It will distribute it. It will launch as many instances as required for processing the data, and then it will destroy the instances when uh, it is not running um, any data analytics job or any data processing job, right? And, and you will be able to save the cost. So the elasticity factor of the cloud is actually backfilling your uh, um, uh, big data uh, requirements, right? So that way, uh, it is very useful. And AWS Architect certification is the right certification for this. I will try to pick up a few more questions. Okay, so there is a request from uh, Deepak. I will take few min few more minutes from you to just query, uh, just uh, explain the query from uh, Deepak. Yeah, so Deepak, this talks about the sysops. Sysops is basically a DevOps or, or an automation engineer. So as I said that the engineer which sits in between the development and the operations, right? And they understand the operations part. Uh, as good as they, are, uh, uh, they understand about the uh, development part. This is the rule for those kind of engineers, and they are in very much demand, right? Here you need to learn a lot of stuff, and and uh, you, uh, um, you you can actually capitalize. You can enhance your knowledge. You can capitalize on it through your career after doing the certification. So yes, uh, let me check if. Any question unanswered? Okay. okay, so Jinsi so, uh, Joe says that working as a digital marketing professional, want to learn cloud computing. It is excellent. Go ahead and learn it. Right? If you're, you're trying to use it from Technical perspective. If you want to use it from a functional perspective, I think it is the best platform for for you. Knowing something from technical technical perspective is equally important. Knowing it from functional perspective. If I know the functions of my applications, I can get it uh, um, developed. For example, if you if you take the example of uh, I'm just not overstating, but if you take the example of um, the Apple um, uh, founder, right? Who is the Apple founder? One question. 
for you, all of you? Steve Jobs, right? So if you look at the Steve Jobs, right? Steve Jobs was not a technologist, but he was a visionary. He was the person who was well aware about the functions, right? He, he wanted to develop and uh, develop a hardware, an application, a software, which actually changed the way people looked at technology, right? iPhone, nobody thought that I have, I, I will have a small phone in my pocket, which, which can do n number of things. iPod was equally innovative. iPad is equally innovative, and it is getting into innovation, right? So those are the technology changes. So that's why is it. You, uh, I say that Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs are equally important. Whether you are a technologist or you are a visionary, you are a functional consultant, you have a very good career in, uh, going ahead. Just try to fill the gap and, and just try to learn as much as possible. With that said, um, I would like to end this session. Uh, any question, you can go ahead and write a mail to support at edureka.co. They will be able to answer, answer your queries or they will be able to forward it to me. So I have a very good morning for those who joined from US and a very good evening for those who are joining from India. Have a great day. Bye-bye.